talking to the beautiful art, the, the, the sort of influences and, and ideas for him, you know, the European art house idea, and I know he was saying that you're into notions of, like, say, the Darden brothers, I guess, and, and Scandinavian and all that. It would be a typical kind of comedy uh, material for a lot of people. I'm guessing you, you were aware of this fact that it, it won't be uh, the easiest of cells to go <laughs> six pack. <laughs> well, as we speak, uh, it's opening up against Harry Potter, the new Harry Potter film. So you'd like to think we'd give them a run for the money. <laughs> but maybe not. They might just do better business at the box office. But, but even within that, like, I mean, the best Irish film in the last 10 years is Adam and Paul. And this is in the sort of same area of, of the Beckett kind of idea of, of, you know, it's not that a huge amount happens and there's a sort of misery yeah. going on on the screen. But yeah. yet there's comedy within the small detail and within, yeah. within that misery. It, it is, a, it, but as I say, it's a tough sell. I don't know whether you you would even think in those terms of being somebody who, who knows how to entertain a huge audience with something like Father Ted and Big Train and all that. Whether the kind of notion of the need to to um, entertain is, is even part no, of it, no, no, I don't. You know, uh, I just you know I like the idea of the film and I just wrote it and then you give it to the producer and, and he uh, the producer and he just spends the next three years trying to get money to make it. Like he'd fly off to Vienna, like I remember him flying off to Vienna with the director, or the then director, because like that changed as well. And then he'd fly off to meet these people in Vienna trying to get money to make and then he'd return. How did it go, Paul? They weren't that interested. <laughs> <laughs> so it's to get it made at all. I mean, I just think in Ireland, because you're never going to make Die Hard 4 or whatever, that, you know, they only have, have enough money to do what essentially they nearly all turn out to be what might broadly be termed art house films, you know. Mm. But like just this just um you know, I, I when I was writing this I, I just watched a lot of I, mean, I kinda think I kinda prefer European films kinda generally anyway, you know. So well, like I liked when I saw this I saw f like Turkish films, Icelandic films. And I liked the fact that very little plot in them. There's probably too much plot in this, if anything. And uh, because I can't follow plots in films anyway, I'm just useless. <laughs> I, saw, I saw some prestige recently, right. and I had a clue what was going on. Yeah. Uh, that's the magician one. That's, that's the thing. magician one, yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. That's all you need to know. Really. It's the magician one. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it wasn't really my kind of film. The uh, the notion too for some, you know, when you see the uh, the, the uh, I just saw one of the buses on the way in with the ad on the side of it. Huge amount of blue sky in the, in the ad, and I thought, yeah. where did they get that from? Because I don't remember <laughs> any blue sky whatsoever. That's what I thought, but you know, the marketing people know best, and that will attract people. If they say, if they say, if they say grey, they'll go, no, grey, I wouldn't go and see a grey film. So you have to lure them in with the promise of blue skies. The but then, album. if they ever get into the cinema, <laughs> then the, the, the horrible reality of what they're watching will dawn upon them. Would you, I don't know if you could, um, be objective about your own work because you, you've had through the years you've just done a huge amount and I know when you and, and, and Graham first went to London um, you know you, you weren't successful with Paris and, 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 and then boom Father Ted is huge and the, the brilliant big train and then hippies didn't quite hit the mark for you mm -hmm. know, commercially I, mean, I don't know whether you yourself feel completely in love with all of them or whether you do that side of it sort of re you recognize well I know why that didn't work and or you know you don't uh, well I you know I reckon if you read like we did as you say Paris what the Lexi said was the first thing we wrote, wrote which wasn't a success then Ted was a success and Hippies wasn't a success I'm like I'm not sure if you read all those scripts you'd know that Ted would leap out as you as the one right. that would be a success so I just think there's just all these elements have to happen like I think casting is hugely important uh, like the cast in Ted was great and there was a kind of chemistry and warmth so uh, no I don't I mean like you know if that was the case I would just write something uh, as good as Father Ted <laughs> 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 you know I mean you try to do it and like Graham's been very successful he's stuck he's stuck with the same formula really in that they're all studio based sitcoms and like you know he's very strong in that but I don't know whether now with this, this played in Edinburgh, and, and uh, it's, it is, as, as you said, like it's a dark film, and, and certainly the, uh, anybody expecting a broad comedy w won't get that. And, and, yeah. and I don't know whether you can be satisfied by but when, you, when you watch a film like this, or whether there's always a, uh, a degree of, of um, it's still ongoing for you. Still, I, I don't know whether you can relax enough to look at it objectively or... Uh, no, probably not. I think you know. I want. I'd want to see it in in like a few years. You know, it's you get very involved and you get too close to it. But generally, I'm happy with like some of my favourite things in it are the more serious bits, not the 
not the more comedic bits. Like, you know, I think there's a lot of warmth and I think there's quite a lot of charm, which I like in films. So, and it's, you know, it's a bit more substantial, I think, than, I think you have to be a bit more thematic than if you're doing a, a sitcom, which is only like 23 minutes or whatever it is. Obviously, a lot of the work you've done, I really think it's amazing, and I love Ardle. And there was that sort of, I like the idea that you were trying something different, and, and, and but the very fact that it is, we say, a risky kind of setup because you know commercially these things are yeah, sure. obvious. You know, yeah. th th those, that, that side of it, I'm, I'm guessing you're completely comfortable with, or, or would you hope and pray that, well, it does get a, bi a, a big audience? Or, I don't know what well, yeah, saying. I mean, you do hope and pray, but you have to be realistic about it. Like, it's not, it's, it doesn't have Bruce Willis in it. Or it doesn't have Daniel Day Lewis in it. Ardle's very close. <laughs> He's like yeah, no, I think Ardle is fantastic in it. Yeah. Like I, I, I go and see uh, Ardle in a film before Bruce Willis. But I suppose the wider public are more attuned to uh, seeing, you know, Johnny Depp and big Hollywood films. I mean, they're the most successful. Like I'm under no illusions that this is going to break box office records. But as I said, like you know, it's great that these films get made at all and that's the achievement and you know I'm very I'm, I'm more than pleased with it you know it is it is your um, first feature and, and I don't know whether the last few years uh, in one interview I read that it sort of suggests that you were kind of quiet but I guess that, that, that as a writer there's just periods of time when when you're working on about three or four projects and they all just haven't come to fruition yeah in the case of now wide open spaces and then also Val Falvey yeah. TD come to, to, to TV yeah I spoke to Ard Ardle about the idea of, of a career and the idea that you know what people a perception of people might feel about his work or his you know his uh, I don't know whether you think in those terms at all whether you feel there's a kind of side to you that that, that uh, has you feel you've your own reputation to live up to or whether you, such uh, ideas wouldn't uh, I, I, well what even if if I'm aware of something like I've got my own reputation to live up to what can I do with that notion except try and just do something that I want to do and and uh, that's all I can do really you know I mean I, I, I I've never been asked to do a big commercial film and I probably never will be and just you know I, I, the kind of film I, I would write is something that wide open spaces or something like if I do another one I mean I'd like to you know move away from broader comedy into things that are still comedy but more like kind of you know I like I like Mike Lee's kind of stuff or even Shane Meadows lighter side like you know like yeah. This Is England which I love yeah. it's a very serious film but there are very funny moments in it as well like what Mike Lee does you know I, mean, I like those kind of films I don't like big you know self-conscious comedy films especially British films uh, I don't particularly like, you know, I like smaller independent films or foreign films really. But like, like Noi the Albino, I don't know if you've seen that, an Icelandic yeah. film. Yeah, yeah. Like I think that was just really funny, but you know, ba on the basic serious premise. Or I saw recently The Heartbreak Kid, have you ever seen that, the original with yeah, Charles Grodin? I, I didn't catch the original actually, no, I saw it. Well, the original... I like the remake to be honest, I thought it was fine. Yeah, well yeah. The, you should, the original is brilliant and it's, right. it's, I watched it again because I was taping it. Because it's impossible, you can't get it in DVD, but right. an old video of it, so I was putting on the DVD. But that's pretty much the perfect, uh, how to direct a comedy film is, it's pretty perfect at that. And the, the performances in it are perfect, so I think. Uh, that's a bit of a blueprint as to how to make a really great comedy film, which is kind of a bit serious enough topic, but you know, it's the central performance is very funny and the script is really good. Neil Simon's script, actually. So, uh, uh, was it what, Lane, it wasn't Lane Stritcher, I forget the Elaine uh, May. Elaine May, that's yeah, it. Yeah, who used to work with Mike Nichols a lot. That's it, yeah. Mm. Um, just, just from the point of view of the comedy, like, I, I obviously met you years ago when working in Hot Press, yes. and, and you were there. And, I've always sort of loved stuff you contribute to the Viz and all that, that, and you know, reckoning that that you know the assassination assassination of JFK was I think it was Leeds United football team from Man United team from 1963. Right, that that kind of humour which is just so wonderfully uh, left field and yet as a sort of quaintness, almost I don't know, like there's a kind of warmth about it as well. It's not you know it's not sort of Monty Python or Goons where it's completely nuts. There's actually a kind of local paperish kind of feel to it. I don't know where that... Well, I tell you, I was very much influenced by this um, American humorist illustrator called Bruce McCall, um, who used to do a lot of work in National Lampoon and New Yorker and stuff. 
And I, I was given a book by him called Zany Afternoons, and that was a big influence on me because it was all kind of fake kind of brochures for the Titanic or like something called the Titanic. Yeah. And he did these fabulous illustrations, but all very deadpan and like you could just about maybe uh, believe it. I like that thing where you can kind of believe something until you investigate a bit more, which is very true of like Armando Anucci stuff yeah. on the air or the day to day. Because when myself and Graham moved to London first, we didn't have a television or anything, but I saw there's a program called On the Hour. Yeah. And you do, it was so, his genius of Armando and Chris Morris was to do, take a stupid idea, but play it absolutely very seriously. And I think Bruce McCall did that as well. And I, I always think that was hugely impressive. Well, I've got to wrap up there, but, but the idea as, as well, I think growing up in a town called Terman Feckin, which I actually thought didn't re realise was real until uh, just yeah. a recent interview that, that you grew up there. But I'd seen it pop up in places I thought, that couldn't be a real place. Yeah. And then having the healthy uh, Irish uh, male experience of not being hugely close to your father and I don't know, all these things, I don't know if there's certain you recognise in you, there's a, a, there is an Irish kind of this to, to, to a lot of your comedy. Maybe it's just that mm. the Irish situation inspires a lot of comedy in you because there's so much of a... Well, it's, it's, there is an absurdity. I don't know, there's a lot of things you just hear about in Ireland and they are kind of absurd and funny, but I don't know if that, maybe they do happen in, in Sri Lanka or Chechnya, I don't know, it's the same kind of political setup. But there are some, it's just full of absurdities and anomalies and just humorous things in Ireland, I think. Oh, do you think that's a kind of big inspiration? Or yeah, I think it is, yeah. Right. Like I've got the uh, home, the 1932, uh, manual or not manual brochure, catalogue, booklet about the nineteen about the Eucharistic Congress that year. It's just full of really funny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny stuff. I, when my aunt my aunt died a few years ago, and I, amongst her possessions, I found a guide for Catholic Irish people in Britain, which she obviously got. She took over with her in uh, when she went over in the forties and fifties, and it's just very very funny. You know, it's just the church. Politics, there's an absurdity about it in Ireland, which you know, if you just twist it slightly, sometimes you don't even have to twist it slightly, and it's just surreal and funny. Makes it special. That's what it We're is. very special, Paul. Rock and roll. I gotta wrap up. Thank you so much, Arthur. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Cheers, man.